Good morning, everybody. My name is Pete Cabrera Jr. with the Royal Family International University School of Identity and Lifestyle. Man. Wow. I'm going to talk about how you, as a child of God, can experience healing right now, okay? Um, I'm so excited about this video. I've been wanting to put it out for a while. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to break it down. And um, you let me start off by saying that, you know, as believers, the main the main thing that we should focus on the most is believing what God said. That's the key to everything. Believing what God said. And we know that God speaks through Jesus now, not through the prophets, but through Jesus' son. And so it's about what he said, and it's about us walking out and modeling out what the Christ says. So um, if you know someone who's sick, if you know someone who's struggling right now physically, it doesn't matter if it's mental, it doesn't matter if it's uh, internal, it doesn't matter if it's external, it doesn't matter what it is. And I'm going to show you biblically why you can be healed right now. Now, some would say, do I need someone to lay hands on me? Do I need someone to pray for me? Do I need these things? That can help, all of that can help. Now remember, what we're doing is we're asking people to lay hands on us to confirm a truth that's already been purchased for us through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, which means that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if it lives in me, it lives in you, it lives in everyone who's given their lives to Jesus, which means we have the resurrected Christ in us. Now, as a person, as the person of Jesus Christ, no one here will argue or, or reject the fact that Jesus is healer, which means his total identity is healing. His whole identity is the Prince of Peace. His whole identity is love, joy. All the fruit of the Spirit that you are producing is the identity of the Christ that lives in you. So the key here is how do you get this to manifest in a vessel? And that's what all this is going to be about. And I'm going to show you something that usually as, as children of God, we don't really give this much thought. But um, I'm going to show you what it is that's actually happening to us. And I'm going to try and break it down in a way that's it's easy to wrap your mind around. I don't want to get too technical or too deep. I just want to get to some surface level stuff that you can grab and run with right now. Okay, so what's amazing about what it is that we are fighting as Christians, you know, you always ask yourself, why is it that the Bible says that the enemy's been defeated, but yet it feels like I'm being attacked? Why does it say that the devil has no power, yet it feels like he's unleashing it on me? What is going on here? Why am I struggling with this? We have to confirm that Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. And we know that the enemy is beneath his feet, and scripture tells us that he's seated on the right hand of God, making principalities and powers, dominions, angels, whatever it may be, under his authority, which means that he has power and he has say to everything that's created, basically making Jesus Lord over everything. So I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you what sickness is, okay? One of the things that we forget as Christians, and this is so vital, that once we give our lives to Jesus and the Holy Spirit now lives in us, we are now sanctified, which means that we are set apart. Now, when we read the scriptures in Exodus, we hear about the people of God uh, they have a covenant with God, and God tells Moses, hey, sprinkle the blood on the on the commandments, on the law, on the people, and let's make a covenant. And the people say out loud together as one, everything that you say we will do. We will be your people. You will be our God. Now, here's what's interesting. All the things that happen to the people of God at this point happens to them because they're going against what God said. So I want to show you something in scripture. Now, there's this, this amazing reality that happens in Numbers, and you have to know this, okay? In Numbers chapter 21, verse 5, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Therefore, have you brought up 
us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness. So I'm going to stop right here. Now, remember, Moses represents the shepherd here. He's leading the people of God. Moses is the shadow of the Christ, which means that Moses is speaking on behalf of God. They're speaking against Moses and they're speaking against God. Now, hear me out. When you're in the presence of God, when you're being led by the spirit of God and you say that you everything. And, and I love when Jesus says this. Why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? This is very vital. Remember, we carry the presence of the living God. We have the spirit on the inside of us. And going against God means that you're speaking against what it is that God has said. Remember, we're under the new covenant. We're in a covenant through Christ at the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. We take on the baptism, which means we die with Christ, and we're raised in the basically the kingdom of God. We're raised into this identity. We're raised as a new creation. We're raised in newness of life. So we're walking this reality out in a covenant. Now, how many times have you spoke against what it is that you have? How many times have you spoke against God when you got sick and said, well, I'm sick. I don't feel good. Oh, I'm never going to do this. I need this. I need that. How many times have you spoke against the realities of God in your life, you yourself? How many times have you allowed the realities of this world, whether it be physically, whether it be emotionally, whether it be whatever it be, how many times have you took that reality and you've come against who God is for you, when you've come against who the Holy Spirit is for you, when you've come against yourself? Half the stuff that we battle is self-induced. I'm going to show it to you because here in numerals, when they're complaining, here's what happens. Watch this. Verse seven, therefore the people came to Moses. Oh, excuse me, let me keep going. This is numerals 21, verse five. If you can apply what I'm gonna tell you right now, you can stand up right now after this video and be like, you know what, I'm not putting up with this anymore. I'm not gonna deal with this anymore. After you watch this video, you can do that when you apply what it is I'm gonna show you. Watch this, numerals 21, verse five. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and are so um, loathed this light bread. So basically, they don't like the bread it is that they're getting, which is the manna, which is the word of God, which is this is what sustains you, and they don't want it, but that's all they need. How many people do you know don't want to get in their word? How many people do you know don't want to eat what it is that God has given? How many people do you know it's not good enough? We're just tired of this. We're tired of what you're giving us, God, but this is what's sustaining you. Watch this. And the Lord said, sent fiery serpents among the people. Now, this scripture here does not say that the enemy was attacking them. This scripture here tells us that the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people and much people of Israel died. Now, you would ask yourself, why would God send fiery serpents to them? Why would he do that to them? Why would he allow snakes to bite them? Watch this. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Okay, let me stop right here. So let me, before I go any further, this is so vital for us to understand. Why is the scriptures using serpents? Why are snakes biting people? Why is the Lord sending snakes? Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 2. This is vital that you know this because you're a child of God and you carry the presence of the living God and you got to know what it is that's biting you. Even now, we're all being bit right now. A lot of us being bit worse than others. A lot of us are dying from these bites. Okay, watch this. Genesis 2, chapter 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So you are wrapped in a body that comes from the ground. In fact, scripture tells us that the body will return to the dirt from whence it came, which means that you are made of dirt, dust, vital. Watch this. Here's the curse. Genesis 3, 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, above every beast of the field, upon your belly, you shall go, and dust shall you eat all the days 
of your life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his head. The reason that the serpent eats dust is because we are made of the dust. And because we fell, we fell into that reality where the serpent now has access to who we are under the curse. Now remember, Jesus became a curse for us, redeeming us from the curse of the law, which means that you get bit in so many areas. And the scriptures even say that we devour ourselves. We eat each other because what we're fighting in Christ is the, the nature of the beast. Remember, you were by nature the child of wrath. And now by nature, we become a new creation and we, we partake of his divine nature, which means that now you have the nature of the living God on the inside of you. Now, here's the problem. A lot of us carrying the nature of God are being bit, even though we have the presence of God leading us through a walk. This is vital that you know this because through a walk, a lot of things are coming your way. You're going to be bit. You're going to, we put on the armor of God because there's things coming our way. Guys, when we give our lives to Jesus, Jesus is not the invisible cloak. Okay. We don't put him on and then all of a sudden things can't see us. That's not how it works, okay? We're put on armor because things are gonna see you. In fact, the Bible says you're gonna be a light. You're gonna be a light unto the world. You're a light, you're a light on a hill, which means that your whole life is going to expose who you are. There's no going into hiding here, okay? It's about who we are in Christ. And a lot of people are gonna see us. This isn't, hey, hide me. This is about reveal who the Christ is in me. Now, here's the issue that we're gonna run into. In numerous... He does something, and I want to show it to you. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord. Think about this. How many times have you spoken against what Jesus has said about you? How many times? The Bible says here that that's sin. You've sinned against the Lord when you say something opposite of what God has said. If the Lord says do this, then that's what we do because we're under covenant. We're under Christ, under the new covenant in Christ, excuse me. A lot of people say, well, we've been given grace, so that stuff shouldn't affect us. We've been given grace to walk out everything that Christ is for us through a learning process, which means as you're learning and growing, you're given grace. That way you're not constantly being attacked and hit and destroyed by certain things. You've been given the power to overcome them instead of allowing them to destroy you. That's what all this is about. A lot of us are being destroyed because we don't understand this reality in Christ and we're allowing things to bite us and attack us. And because we don't understand what's going on, we kind of just roll up into a ball. We cry and we ask God to do so many things for us. And in the reality in Christ, they've already been done. They've been completed. They've, they've been uh, all the things that we're struggling with have been conquered in the spirit. And all we're doing is walking out a reality here on earth that confirms that truth by proving what is that acceptable will of God? Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you can prove what is that perfect, except will of God. So we have to prove it by the way we walk and by the way we manifest the Christ in us everywhere we go. So when it comes to sickness, okay, there's some snakes right here biting the people of God because they're complaining about what Moses said. They're complaining about what God said. They just get to complaining. Basically complaining is you're, you don't like what's going on. You don't like the situation. You don't like that you're eating this bread. You don't like, it's just constant complaining. This is what's going on. And because of that, the Lord sent serpents. Watch this. I am not saying that the Lord sent sickness to you. That's not what I'm saying. I am not saying that God has put things on you. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there are things in this world, whether they be spiritual, physical, whatever they may be, that are going to try and bite you. You're going to be bit at some point. This is why the scriptures tell us that we can drink any poisonous thing. We can pick up snakes. We can pick up serpents because the very things that are coming at us, the, the nature of the beast, the nature of sin, the nature of sickness, the nature of the fall is to consume you, to eat you, to bite you. Okay. Some people tell me, Pete, I have an issue with trust because I can't trust people. I tell people, no, trust is good. Trust that that snake is going to bite you because that's its nature. Trust that that dog might bite you because that's its nature. Don't be afraid of it. 
Trust in the fact that the nature of the fall is what it is. So you don't have a trust issue. You just don't know what to do with whatever it is that's coming at you. But when you understand and you can discern, then you're okay because when that serpent tries to bite, you know what you can do. You can snatch it by the head. You can do everything that God has called you to do. When sickness comes and you're, you're not afraid of it because you understand some stuff and this is what I want to address, okay? So here we go. And the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten when he looks upon it shall live. So basically what he says is I want you to make a snake. It's not a snake, but it looks like a snake. It's in the image of a snake, which is very, very interesting because we're going to find out that God made man with his hands. He made man in his image. He made man. That's the image. We're not God, but we're in the image of God. Okay. Now, when man fell, he lost that because he took on the nature of the serpent. He took on the nature by the fall. We became enemies of God in our minds. We became children of wrath. We became children of darkness. We became by nature what the serpent became. You have to know that. We were fallen. The identity. Your father was the father of lies. He was your daddy. You needed to come to your heavenly father. You needed to be set free. So by nature, by nature, you were a child of the devil. Okay? You, you looked like God on the outside, the image, but you were lost to that. Okay? This is very interesting. So what Moses does is he takes this serpent that's biting people. He makes an image. It's not the serpent, but it's in the image of the serpent. This is very interesting. And he hangs it on a pole. Watch this. And Moses makes a serpent of brass and puts it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, any man, any man. I like that word, any man. Every man who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says any man, tin man, superman, snowman. <laughs> wolf man, if any man, when he was bitten, looked at it, right? When he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived, okay? That serpent represents the Christ who dies on the cross. Now, you have to know this. If you're, if you're dealing with sickness and disease, you, you need to know this. this is so vital. So Jesus came in the image, in the image of sinful flesh. He was not sinful flesh, but he came in the image. So he wasn't that, but he looked like that. This is vital because when you get bitten by a snake, when you get bitten by disease, when you get bitten by anything, cancer, it doesn't matter what it is, scoliosis, anything, all this is in the flesh, all of this, because the serpent's curse is that he's going to eat flesh all the days of his life. Sickness only attacks flesh. Disease only attacks flesh because in the spirit, you are sealed with a promise. Sickness cannot touch your soul. People tell me, oh, he's hurting in his soul. No, he's not hurting in his soul. He's wrapped in Christ in his soul and his mind's telling him that he's falling apart. His mind, he hasn't renewed his mind to this reality. So he's allowing his mind to create a reality for him and he's trapped in that reality, not accepting the realities that are in Christ, which means that you're in joy, you're in peace, you're all these things in Christ, but you can't really grab that if you haven't renewed your mind to the realities of what's happened to you. So while you're getting bit, if your mindset is not in Christ, you are going to feel helpless. You're going to feel like you don't know what to do. You're not going to know how to defend yourself, which I'm going to talk about here in a little bit on how to defend yourself against that. Now, the reason that Jesus represents the serpent in this verse is because in the same way, in the same way, give this some thought. Jesus showed up into a world where sickness and disease and famine and religion and all these things were affecting the world. And it was sin because of the fall. Sickness, disease, it doesn't matter what it is, okay? People tell me, what if it's a spirit? What if it's this? What if it's, it doesn't matter what it is. Let's not get confused here. Jesus is Lord over all, over everything. He's been given all power, all authority, 
all power and all means all. If you don't understand this, if you don't grab your mind, if you don't let your mind wrap around this, you're going to struggle. Well, if he has all power, why am I being attacked? I'm trying to show you. I'm going to show you why we're being attacked right here. Because we're speaking against God. We're doing things against God. We're not allowing God's truth to speak for us. We're allowing sickness to speak for us. We're allowing the circumstances of the desert to speak for us. We're allowing our lack of food to speak for us. We're, lack, we're allowing our thirst to speak for us. We're allowing the, the heat to speak for us. And so we begin to complain because of everything that's affecting us on the outside when in reality, the presence of God is following them through the desert. So basically, heaven is there in the desert, but they can't focus on that because they're too busy looking at their circumstances. They're too busy looking at the heat, the lack of this, the lack of that. How can you be in lack when you have God with you in the desert providing for you day and night? That's your soul right there. Your soul has been provided for. It is in Christ. You are in the desert mentally, physically, and emotionally. You feel lost. You feel like, you know, where is God? Where is he at? And the whole time, He's been in our presence the whole time. We've been in his presence. We've become one. We're walking this reality out, but why am my shoulder hurt? Why is my back hurt? Oh, why am I always taking these pills and why can't I go free? And oh, constantly complaining and complaining and complaining and complaining. I tell people, you get in that flesh, it's going to get bit every time. And if it's not getting bit, you're going to bite somebody else because that's the nature that we're fighting in Christ. Put off the old man, put on the new. Okay, so here we go. Jesus came as a man, the son of man. And on the inside of him was the presence and the spirit of the living God. The true identity of Jesus inside was being made manifest through a walk, through a life. Okay, so everything that he was on the outside was not sinful flesh, but he hung on a tree because everything that was biting us, carnality, the fall, all these things that were biting everyone before the resurrection, he said, oh, that stuff's killing you? The fall's killing you? The serpent's killing you? The curse is killing you? Sickness is this killing you? All these things are killing you? All these things are biting you? I tell you what, raise me up in the image of all that that's biting you. Raise me up in the image of a man, of a fallen man. Raise me up in the image of a fallen man in a fallen world and raise me up. Let me become everything that they are and raise me up. So when they're being bitten, they can look at me. They can remember, they'll be healed if they look at me. Okay, now here it is. So why is this vital? Because the Christ is in you. How do you see the Christ when he's in you? How can you look at the face of Jesus if he's on the inside of you? How do we do this? If in the spirit he's seated on the right hand of God and we're seated with him in victory, like how do we see who he is for us in this reality? How do we bring that home to us? Because I'm not asking to be healed. I am healed in the Christ. I'm not asking to be free. I am free in the Christ. But my mind and my body in this reality is going to wage war on that because it doesn't understand it. And my job as a child of God is to take my thoughts captive, to bring my vessel into obedience, to, to possess my vessel in honor, to allow my realities in this world to submit to what God said, not to contradict God, not to speak against God. You know how many people... I hear say that God doesn't heal anymore. That's speaking against God. You know how many people I hear saying, you know, I'm going to die of this. God said you will not die. You will live. You are an eternal being. You are going to live forever. But this vessel is what I'm trying to heal. You can't heal this vessel in Christ if you keep contradicting what it's carrying. If it's carrying truth, then it, may be, it must be spoken to in truth, not physical truth. Spiritual truth, because spiritual truths are what confirms everything that you are in the spirit. Your body's not going to line up to what you're not saying to it. It has to hear what you're saying. It has to line up. 
Sickness has to die. Why? Because it's in a body that was paid for with a price. God allows what you allow. And I tell people, don't allow that thing in your body. Don't allow that mindset. But Pete, you don't understand. I've been in a wheelchair my whole life. I get it. But that doesn't change who God is for you. It doesn't change his heart. But if it's his heart, why am I in this chair? Why isn't he picking me up? Why is he sending a man of God to me to take me by the hand and pick me up? Why is it like, why don't you quit complaining? First of all, quit it. Stop complaining. You have the manna that you should be eating every day. You have the water, which is the spirit of God that's been given to you every day. You can walk out of your situation in Christ. That's what Exodus is all about. It took them 40 years to walk out of the desert, but best believe they walked out in Egypt, when they were trapped as slaves by Pharaoh, they walked out. You can walk out of your situation right now. You don't need a man of God to show up and lead you by the hand unless you're being mentored or trained or discipled. But a spiritual truth is a spiritual truth regardless of who's with you and the Christ is walking with you. So for those who say, I need someone, I need, and don't misunderstand me, God will send people to you, but you can grab the hand of Jesus right now. He's with you. He can walk you out of that situation right now. But here's the key right here. At the fall, there was a decree that covered the entire world. It was called sin and death. The wages of sin is death. So all of humanity fell under that decree under the fall. Not one man is righteous, not one. So now, he can't change that decree. God won't go back on his word. He won't. He can't eradicate that because that's already happened. He said, in the day that you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. So all humanity, before they have the spirit living on the inside of them, they're dead. Everyone who's not in Christ is dead, is asleep, hasn't come to the realization of who they are in this world. That's everybody because of the fall. So that decree stands. That means that that decree has power for those who don't know the new decree. The new decree is you've been given power to fight back. That's why you were given the Holy Spirit to fight back, okay? To stand, stand there for doing all to stand. Now, the story of Esther is about this. The story of Esther is about a queen who doesn't tell the king that she's Jewish. She's basically lying to him, not telling him the truth, hiding the truth from the king that she's a Jew. The whole story is about coming out and being honest about who you are before the king. There's a decree that all the people are gonna be killed in the story of Esther. If you read it, it's in chapter eight. You hear about this decree, <clears throat> that the, the decree that all the people are gonna die in one day. And Esther goes before the king. Um, <clears throat> you have to know this because you have a decree in Christ. Your body's still convinced of the first decree <clears throat> because it thinks it's still living under the first decree. The mindset is still under the first decree. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a lot of people in Christ living under the first decree, under the law, under the old covenant. And if that's what they want to do, that's on them. But don't let them speak for you because you're in Christ now and you're on the other side. You're in glory. You're in victory already. And you're walking out a new decree. A lot of people will try to bring you under that old decree that, oh, the sovereignty of God. He, you know, it's just, hey, whoa, well, hold up, hold up. What about the faithfulness of God? What about the faithfulness? of his word? What about the faithfulness of what he said he would do? What about that? Can we hold God to his word? Moses did it. Moses held him to his word. Abraham did it. Isaac did it. Jacob did it. They all did it. They all hold God to his word. You said, you said, you said, that's taking the authority that you've been given in Christ to use what it is that God has said over your life. And you can use it. 
And you can use it, not that you're using God, but because you understand who he is for you, you can walk in those realities because you're going to walk in some amazing things when you understand why this authority was given to you in the first place. And it was so you could eradicate what it is that's destroying the children of God, because this isn't about you. This isn't about me. This is about all of us as a whole and his children are suffering. And it's about his children who've been enslaved by the serpent. It's about his children who are being attacked. It's about his children who are crying out. It's about his children who are being burdened. It's about his children. It's about them. And it's about us going to them in Christ and telling them, hey, you can be free from that right now. You can be free from that addiction. You can be free from that pain. You can be free from that sickness. You can be free from that disease. You can be free from all of it. But then you'll say, but Pete, you don't understand. I've been dealing with this my whole life. Yes, you have a body, but maybe the body should be dealing with you its whole life instead of the other way around. You don't deal with your issues. You make those issues deal with the Christ in you. That's the difference. You don't allow the body to speak for you. You speak to the body. You tell the body what's required of the body. You tell the body what it has to do. You submit it and you make it do what it has to do. And if it doesn't know how to do it, you make it do it. You teach it how. You push that thing until it does. It's called discipline. Discipline. You can learn. You can learn. You can learn to walk out who the Christ is in every situation. It can be done. The spirit of a man in Christ is so powerful. It's so powerful. I was watching a video. Of, there's a tribe in Africa. There's three guys. And they'll find a big old beast, right? Like a, a, a wilder beast or whatever. A, a big old cow with horns or whatever. And what they'll do is they'll chase it. Just three guys. They'll chase one wilder beast. And this thing's massive, thousands of pounds, a thousand pounds or whatever. And one guy will chase it. And then it'll run and then it'll stop. And then they'll see the guy coming again. And then it'll get up and it'll run. And then it'll stop. And then they'll see the guy coming again. And they'll do this all day until the wilderbeast gets so tired that it just lays down. And they chased it all day. A hundred pound guys chasing a wilderbeast to the point to where it just sits there and it doesn't even want to get up. And the guy goes up to it with a blade and he just sticks it. It doesn't even get up. It's too, it's too exhausted. The Willoughby's too exhausted to get up. It's too exhausted to fight back. It's too exhausted. That's what we do to the body. We chase it in Christ to the point to where it submits. Yes, you can run, but you can't hide. You can run, but you're going to submit. You're going you, you to try and get away, but you, there's no escape in the Christ in you. There's no escape. And you got to bring the mindset and your body into the reality to the point to where it just lays down. And it's just, it says, I'm done. And you're like, yeah, you've been done while you've been running. I know a lot of believers who've been running like that from the presence of God to the point to where they hit rock bottom and they can't run no more. It's best you just lay down now. And guess what? Half the things you're going to be battling is not going to want to do it. It's not going to want to do it. Now, remember, there was a decree that all the people of God were going to be destroyed in one day. And it's in Esther chapter 8. Um, uh, Esther 8 5 if it pleased the king and if I found favor in your sight and the things seem right before the king it's always about this doesn't seem right God this doesn't seem right it doesn't seem right what's happening to your children it doesn't seem right what's happening to me if you love me Lord look this is what this is about this woman Esther represents the bride of Christ in the story this is the only story in the Bible that doesn't talk about God. It only talks about the relationship between Esther, the people, uh, Hanan, and, and God, and Mordecai. That's what the story is about. This is the only story. But it's talking about a relationship. And the king, she has to go before the king. And this is who we are. We have to come before the king and, and be honest with ourselves, even if it means death. We have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be honest to God. We have to stand before a king and say, if it pleases you, now that you know who I am, now that you know that I'm a Jew, now that you know that I've been lying to you, now that you know that I'm like them, now that you know, will you still love me? And the king's like, yeah, then if you love me, then you'll love them too. Because that's what it's about. An attack on me is an attack on them. 
in the eyes of God, when you attack the children of God is as if they're attacking the king himself because the wife and the king are one and you are a child of God and you're an heir to the throne, which means and a hand is laid on you, the hand is laid on him. And we can't allow that to happen in the kingdom of God. And we say, Lord, if it pleases you, if I found favor, which yes, you're favored and you're blessed in the eyes of God. If I found favor in your, in your sight, it's crazy because a lot of people say, you know, when you stand before the presence of God, man will die in his presence. The old man's supposed to die in the presence of God. This is what all this is about. When you get before the presence of God, the old man who's dead can't stand in the face of God. It dies. That reality dies. This is what it's about, getting into the presence of God because all of that dies. All of that falls off. All of that is it, it, it's done away with. And that's why we get into his presence, because it's his presence that heals. It's his presence that does these things. But it doesn't mean you're not going to be attacked, because remember, in this story, the decree was given. That's the fall. You're going to be destroyed. The devourer is coming. Sickness is coming. Disease is coming. Yes, even to you in Christ, it's going to come, and it's going to try and take your life, because that's what it does. This is why the Passover lamb is so vital. This is why we take communion as Christians because when the devourer comes to take you, it can't take you because it sees that the lamb, the Passover lamb, who's the Christ, which we call communion. When we break bread, do this in remembrance of me as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Communion means we're eating the body of Christ and drinking his blood, which means we become one with him. So when the devourer comes and it wants to take you, it sees Jesus on the cross and it leaves you alone because it can't touch you because it's already been paid for. Sickness and disease has already been paid for on the cross. It's already paid the debt. Why are you paying it? Why are you paying the debt? You don't need to be paying that debt. Jesus paid the debt of sickness and disease and he hung himself on a tree. So when you would get bitten, you would look at him and say, why are you biting me? He died so, so you wouldn't bite me. So you would bite him and he would take that to the grave. And when Jesus dies, he conquers death, hell, and the grave and he stands up. And it has no power over him. So now when the Christ walks around, the serpent can't bite him. He grabs it. What are you doing? Try to bite me. You can't bite me. Sickness comes. Ah, uh, yeah, no, nah, uh-uh. No, you can't bite me. You can't. You can't. Because everything that you're trying to bite is dead. And that's what the walk's all about. We walk in newness of life. So now, why am I saying this? Because this decree is coming. Sickness is coming to every person who doesn't understand this truth. If you don't understand this truth, you can't defend yourself against it. Why do you need to defend yourself? I'm going to show it to you right here in 11. Wherefore, the king granted the Jews, which were in every city, to gather themselves. Remember, he couldn't speak. I'm going to show it to you. He couldn't speak against the decree he gave. God can't speak against the decree he gave at the fall. He can't. It's still there. It's still there. So what happens to us now in Christ? Right here. We defend ourselves in Christ. I'm going to show you. Watch this. Wherefore, the king granted the Jews, which were in every city, to gather themselves together. To gather themselves together. <laughs> and to stand for their life. To destroy. Stand for your life. Jesus stand and stood for your life. He gave his life so you could live. Watch this. And to slay and to cause to perish all the power of the people and promise that would assault them, both little ones, women, and to take and spoil of them for a prey. Which means that you've been given power to stand up. Watch this, watch this, 13. The copy of the written for the commandment to be given in every province was published unto all the people. <laughs> Watch this. And that the Jews should be ready against the day to avenge themselves on their enemies. Oh, snap. But the Bible says to love your enemies. Yeah, love your enemies. But what we're fighting is not people. What we're fighting is a spiritual truth. A spiritual truth that in Christ you're healed. But there's things coming at you that are attacking, attacking who you are, attacking your identity, attacking the children of God, trying to take your life, trying
trying to rob you of your life, trying to rob you of your joy. It's all about that. You are the bride as well. You're the bride of Christ. We're the church. And this is attack on the church, sickness, disease, and all these things. But we have a decree that we can fight back. How do we fight back? Oh, we stand on the word of God. We put on the armor and we stand there for it because we're in victory. Everything that's trying to attack us, everything that's trying to take our life, Jesus is conquered through his death, burial, and resurrection. So now that we're dealing with sickness and disease, we're like, wait a minute. Why am I allowing this attack on the temple of God? Why am I allowing this sickness to grow? I should be taking its life. I should be commanding it to die day and night. Sickness, die in the name of Jesus. Sickness, go in the name of Jesus. Muscles, I know I don't have any, but in the name of Jesus. Vessel, you will grow new muscles. You will grow new tendons. Why? Because the spirit of the living God is on the inside of me and it gives life. If it created a man, if it created a man, if God created a man out of the dirt and he lives on the inside of me, you think he ain't going to create a lung? You think he ain't going to create a liver? You think he ain't going to create an eye socket? Man, women create a whole baby in nine months. You think God won't give you a new lung? Come on. If we could just stand for nine months and believe God every day, for health. If we could believe God for 90 days, maybe we could birth the reality in Christ through the word of God. Oh wait, the word became flesh. Yes, the word becomes flesh because your flesh is what's dealing with sickness and disease. And the word has to become flesh in that area, which means that this flesh here has to submit to the word of God. Only him you'll serve. You ain't going to bow down to sickness. You ain't going to bow down to sickness and disease. No, you will serve the Lord your God and only him shall you serve. You will serve the Lord your God and only him shall you serve. You will serve the Lord your God and only him shall you serve. Listen, vessel, you carry the presence of the living God. You think you're going to do whatever you want? No, you don't bow down to anyone. You bow down to the Lord and only him shall you serve. What? I haven't been able to get up out of this chair. I've had back pain. Who are you to tell me that I can't stand up and carry the presence of God? How dare you tell me that I can't carry the presence of God? How dare you tell me that I can't breathe in and allow the presence of God to be carried in this vessel across the room? How dare you tell me that I can't get any rest because this vessel needs its rest to carry the presence of the living God because you carry the bread of life. You carry the water that people need, the essence and the beauty and the realities of God kingdoms in a vessel that's just fighting you all the time. You're being bit daily, every single day. And it's about time you snatched that serpent by the mouth and told it to shut up. You ain't biting me anymore. It ain't gonna happen. I'm not gonna allow you to bite me anymore. I'm done complaining. I'm done complaining. I'm gonna start praising God for what he's done. I'm gonna praise God that he gives me bread every day. I'm gonna praise God that he gives me water every day. I'm gonna praise God that I'm in his presence. I'm gonna praise God in the midst of the desert, in the midst of the issues, in the midst of all this I have his presence. I'm gonna praise God. I'm gonna praise God. And in the name of Jesus, when the serpent comes and he tries to bite you, you say, what you biting me for? You ain't even biting me. This is the body of Christ. How dare you attack your creator? Your creator bought this body with a price and you think you just going to bite it? And the serpent's going to say, well, you're letting me. God allows what you allow. God allows what you allow. Remember, when you take communion, when you take communion, you watch. Let me show you something. Let me do this right now. Watch this. Let me show you. I got a little bit of coffee left. Watch this. Watch. This is how you take communion. Watch this. If you have sickness right now, watch what God's gonna do. Watch. This is the body of Christ. Represents his body. Broken for you. Whipped. Whipped. Tempted at all points. Spit on. Mocked. Slapped. 
hung on a tree. His body, his body died for you. And he knew he was going to die for you. That's why he came. And he knew that if you understood this reality, when sickness would come, you would be set free. If you knew this. If you knew this. So if you have sickness in your body and it's been attacking you, you say, you're not attacking my body. You're attacking the body of Christ. He's the body of the church, the head of the church, not the head of the body of sin, like Nathan says, Nathan Cintron. You are not the body of sin. You may have some sin that you're dealing with, but it's not in your body. You do not allow sin in your body, let alone anything that you do with sin. So you get the bread and you realize that when you're eating this, it's as if you're eating the Passover lamb in Exodus. He represents the lamb because you ate the lamb. The lamb was flesh. You ate flesh because you were flesh, but you're not flesh anymore. You're spirit now. So you don't eat the flesh of Jesus. You eat the bread. This is not flesh. <laughs> this is bread. You went from carnal to spirit. You don't eat flesh. The serpent eats flesh. That's what it's after. It's after flesh. But you're a spirit and you eat bread now and you drink water now. And the wine. And you're eating it because you don't eat flesh anymore. You eat the bread and the bread represents the Christ. The Christ back in Exodus was flesh. He came as a man. He came as a man. As a man. And when you ate the Passover lamb in Exodus, the devourer came to kill the firstborn son and try to go into the house. And the firstborn son is the old man. You were born into sin. That's the old man. And the devourer comes to devour him, to kill him because death, death and sin is reigning. And it's the wages of sin is death. And you're going to die. And the devourer is coming. It's going to kill you. It's going to eat you. It's going to attack you. Praise God, Jesus. And Moses came and he said, death's coming. He's going to take your firstborn son, but you're going to lay down a lamb and you're going to eat from the lamb that represents the Christ. And you're going to eat and you're going to be part of that lamb. And so when death comes to take you, he's going to take your place. He's going to take your place. So death will come, but it's not going to hit you. It's going to hit the lamb because he's going to take your place. And if you can be a part of that lamb, it won't know the difference between you and the lamb. He's going to think you're the lamb. And he's going to come and he's going to try and take your life. But he's going to see the lamb slain. He's going to see the lamb slain. He's going to see him broken and beaten. And he's just going to pass you by. Because you've been set free by the blood of the lamb. And you eat the bread. And you say, thank you, Jesus, that when sickness and disease comes, I'm dead to that. And I'm in you. And sickness and disease has no say in your body because you've been broken and beaten and maimed beyond recognition. Because we were unrecognizable to God. So he had to become unrecognizable. And now because he's, what he's done is you get to eat from the bread That's what he's done. You don't let anybody rob you of that truth. Healing is for you in him right now. Sickness can't touch you in Christ if you understand this truth. I may try to convince you that you're going to die. And even if you do, even if healing doesn't, manifest we still ain't gonna bow <laughs> it ain't gonna happen
We only bow to him. Not to sickness, not disease, no. That's communion. Eating his flesh, drinking his blood. Now he's the bread, now he's the wine, the new covenant. And we're been set free from that. And if you're being bit, you understand why. And now it's time to stand up and take back your health in Christ. Take back everything that the enemies try to take from you right now. And you can take this communion every day, Sunday. When sickness, no, you're not attacking me. You're attacking the king and you eat it. You're not attacking me. You're attacking the king. And you eat it. You're not attacking me. You're attacking the king. You're attacking the king. You're attacking the king. It's not me anymore. It's him you're attacking. And you give yourself to that. You can take communion right now and say, you know what? The devourer comes. You have no say. Mm -mm. I'm in Christ, man. And he's the one that defeated hell, death, and the grave. Death, hell, and the grave. And if he did it for all humanity, you think he won't do it for you? Individually, if he did it for the whole world, he ain't gonna do it for one person. If he did it for all humanity, he ain't gonna do it for you. He's in you. And now he wants you to do it for everyone else. And that's what this is about. So I love you guys in the name of Jesus. If I get emotional, it's because I know people are suffering, man. They're suffering right now. They're hurting. They have pain in their bodies. And you know what? Don't give up. Be of good cheer. Father, in the name of Jesus. To everyone listening, Father, in the name of you, I just thank you for complete <clears throat> restoration and healing in their bodies, in their nerves, in the tendons I command in the name of Jesus right now, Father. Right now, in the name of you, I command complete restoration right now, Father. Touch them right where they're at, Father. You are everywhere that you need to be, Father. You're all over them. You're all over that sickness. You're all over that disease. You're all over everything that needs to touch by you, Father. And I thank you, Lord God, for your reality. I think I live in, Lord God. Thank you for complete freedom. Deliverance is being delivered from everything that's trying to enslave them, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys in the name of Jesus. I gotta go. I love you guys. Um, hopefully this helps you out. I'm still writing Awakening the Mind of Christ, and I just wanted to do this video, and I, hopefully this helps you. If someone tells you that healing is not for today, <clears throat> then salvation isn't either, because it's a person. So I love you guys in the name of Jesus. They talk about that. They say, you know, the gifts went out, that this went out. Oh, well, salvation is a gift. Did that go out too? <laughs> so guys, don't let people rob you of that. If they want to die, if they want to roll around in, if they want to feel that way, and you know what's sad is usually it's flesh and carnality doing that to them. It isn't even God doing that to them. The flesh is doing that to them. The flesh is convincing them of a lie, and now they speak against God, and they just dig a hole, and you don't want to be that. So, guys, I love you guys. Um, I'm traveling, so if you guys want me to come out and do a teaching or come out and do a service or even just come out and hang out, let me know, man. I just want to help people and equip people. And uh, I'm having a school January the 4th through the 9th. And I love you guys in the name of Jesus, www.royalfamilyinternational.com. If this helps you, send it to someone, please. And please just forget about Pete, right? Just listen to the word. It's about Jesus and what he's done. It's not about what Pete's doing. It's about what Jesus is doing, okay? It's about him. Let him manifest. Pete, Pete can't do anything for you. He manifests in those areas. And I'm just trying to get you to look at Jesus. I'm just trying to get you to the heart of God. I'm just trying to get you to focus on who he is for you. And I can help you get there, but it's not about Pete. It's about him. So I love you guys in the name of Jesus. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed.